If we go back to the fuses on the noise filter, L1 power for the bottom circuit then goes through the magnetron thermal cutout. A separate primary switch for the bottom circuit is closed when the door closes, and power is routed to a relay on the board. When the controller calls for the microwave energy, this relay will close and electricity goes to the common terminal of the bottom high voltage transformer. The correct L2 voltage is supplied from the board to the corresponding terminal on the transformer. Okay, here's another scenario for the WDYRC22 oven. When a cook cycle is started, the blower motor and antennas operate and the display counts down, but the food doesn't heat. Well, logic tells us that since there are three microwave circuits in this oven and none of them are working, it's unlikely that there's a problem in each circuit. So the problem most likely is in the control circuit, which basically consists of three major components, the secondary interlock switch, the power relay, and the controller. So let's figure which one is giving us problems. Unplug the oven and remove the outer case. Plug the oven back in and locate the power relay. Put a load in the oven. Then select and begin a cook cycle. One of the major components in a microwave circuit is the high voltage transformer. This component does two jobs. It takes the incoming voltage and steps it up to 2500 volts AC. This voltage is what goes to the voltage doubler circuit to supply the 4 to 5,000 negative DC volts to the magnetron's anode. At the same time, it steps down the incoming voltage to around 4 volts AC, which is what's needed at the magnetron's filament. Because of the high voltage that's present, never try to measure the high voltage output of any microwave high voltage transformer. Always unplug the oven, Perform a lockout tagout procedure and discharge all the high voltage capacitors before beginning this test.